we are not recording. Okay, this is what we have learned. We know that there are different types of environments in which companies operate. We have perfect competition, we have monopolistic competition, we have oligopolies, and then we have monopolies. I think this book uh, is called Duopolis, you know, but uh, we're going to ignore Duopolis. Duopolis is just two companies. So we have learned a lot of information about perfect competition. Perfect competition is a company or an industry that is made of many companies, all of them are very small. They all sell an identical product, right? So then the industry, the forces of supply and demand determine the price. So the price is going to be $20. These companies have no choice, but they have to sell the price, the product at $20. So then the only decision left for these companies is how many units we're going to make. And that's where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Then once they decide the production, then we know they're making money or losing money based on where the average total cost is. For example, this is the average total cost on this situation. And as you can see, in this case, this company is making money because the cost of production on the average costs less than the selling price. But we also learned something about perfect competition. And what we learned about perfect competition is that profits attract competitors. So then on the long run, a perfect competitive company is only going to be able to make a normal profit. The selling price is going to be equal to the average total cost. Okay, any questions about what we have learned about perfect competition? Okay, so today we're going to try to understand how monopolies operate. So we're going to go from one extreme to the other extreme, okay? So now let's talk about what is a monopoly. Hold on for a second, my computer. Let me see if it works. Let me try it again. Uh, let me go with this. Okay. So, what is a monopoly? Oh, it's not appearing on your screen, right? Uh, let me go right here. Screen, share. Okay. I think you have it now. So what is a monopoly? <clears throat> My, hold on guys. Okay. So what is a monopoly? And that's the thing that we're going to discuss today. What is a monopoly? A monopoly is a market structure in which one company, one company controls the market. It doesn't mean that it's only one company. They can be two or three or four companies, but if one company controls the majority of the market, then the company is monopolizing the market. So now, if there's only one company, then we have an absolute monopoly, right? But a monopoly is just simply one company dominates the industry. That's what a monopoly is, a company that dominates the industry. If there's only one company, then we have a, what we call a pure monopoly. So a pure monopoly is when one company in the industry are the same, okay? Now, in some cases, we allow companies to operate by themselves and the government protect them from competition. For example, think about Cleveland Utilities. Cleveland Utilities is the only company that can provide electricity in this city. So then Cleveland Utilities has a monopoly in the, in the delivery of electricity. So then Cleveland Utilities is a natural monopoly. So a natural monopoly is a monopoly that exists because the government has decided that it is better to have only one company and they have government protection. So then a natural monopoly is a monopoly that exists because of government protection, right? A pure monopoly is a company that exists and is the only company in the industry and that is the same as the industry. Then just a monopoly, it's just simply a company that has the majority of the market. It controls the market. That's what a monopoly is. So now, based on the information that you already know about monopolies, that is, in most cases, only one company, right? What we know about monopolies is this. Monopolies, they are not price takers. They are not price takers because in most cases, it's the only provider in town. 
So what we know about monopolies is that monopolies tend to create an imperfect market. And the reason why they create an imperfect market is because they know they are the only sellers in town. In most cases, they're going to take advantage of consumers by selling at a higher price. So monopolies is just like any other company. They have a downward slope in demand curve, which simply means that if they want to sell more, let's say this is the price, this is the quantity. For example, if they want to sell at a price of 20, they're only going to be able to sell, let's say, 100 units. But if they want to charge $30, then they have no choice. This monopoly is going to have to you know, understand that they are not going to be able to sell the same amount of units. So which simply means that the higher the price, the less units they're going to sell. Right? So monopolies do not control the demand. See, the demand is controlled by the consumers. What monopolies do is that they actually control the supply. So then, for example, if this is the supply that monopolies have in the market, so then the price and the demand is going to be determined by the supply, which in this case is how much units one company wants to produce, and the demand made by all the individuals. So now, how do monopolies have some type of market power? Well, monopolies have a market power because they are able to control the supply. So if they cut the supply, for example, they're going to be able to impact prices. And as you can see on this case, by lowering the supply from S of 1 to S of 2, now they are able to actually influence price to go up. So remember this. Monopolies control the supply. Monopolies don't control the demand. Right? So even if they have a lot of power, they don't have absolute power. Because if the monopoly wants to take advantage of us, then we consumers decide if we want to buy it or not, because we control the demand. So then monopolies have another problem then, that if they want to sell more units, they have to lower the price. So this is what happened to a monopoly. Think about this. Let's assume that this monopoly is presently selling right here. At a price of 10, they're selling four units. Now they know that if they want to sell more than four units, they're gonna to have to lower the price. Or let me just go with easy numbers to follow. No, at a price of $10, they're only selling one unit. So if they want to sell more than one unit, they have to lower the price. Let's say this monopoly lowered the price to nine, and now they're going to be able to sell two units. And if they drop the price to eight, now they're going to be able to sell, let's say three units, and if they drop it to seven, now they're going to be able to sell four units, okay, again. That's a monopoly, that if they want to sell more quantities, they're going to have to lower the price. But that creates a problem for a monopoly, because think about this. At a price of 10, they're able to sell one unit, so then the total revenue they're getting is $10. If they want to make more money by selling more units, they have to lower the price, so they lower the price to nine. Now they're selling two units, so now they're making $18. If they lower the price to eight, they'll be able to sell three, so now they are 24, and they drop the price to seven, they're gonna be able to sell four, so now they are 28. So as you can see, the total revenue is increasing as they lower the price. They are making more money. But look what happened to the marginal revenue. Look what happened to the marginal revenue. When they were selling only one unit at a price of 10, they were making $10. They were making $10. But what happened when they decide to lower the price? by one dollar so now they're selling 18 so as you can see now the marginal revenue of the second unit it went up by eight dollars in other words they got eight dollars more by selling the product at nine dollars when they lower the price to eight look what happened to the revenue it increased to 24 so then now they're getting six dollars more and then they are getting four dollars more okay are you following me okay Nathaniel, are you following me? Are you there? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so you follow me what happened with, with monopolies. The monopolies, the only way they can sell more units is by lowering the price. And that creates a problem because the marginal revenue, then it becomes lower. So now look at this. Michael, see if you can see this. At a price of 10, the marginal revenue they get is getting 10. What is the additional revenue they got when they sell the second unit? Think right here. At the second unit, now they are getting what? $8 more. So the second unit only gave them $8. That's 
the third unit only gave them what? Six dollars. And as you can see, for a monopoly, the marginal revenue tend to separate from the demand curve. Okay, let me give you a little review, then I come back to this. Look, on a perfect competition, see, this is a, a tomato grower. If they can sell the product for $20, if they sell one unit, they're gonna get 20. If they sell two, they're gonna get 20. Three, they're gonna sell 20. So then, for a perfect competitive company, the marginal revenue is always equals to the price. Right? It's equal to the price. In other words, the additional revenue they're going to get by selling one more unit is always going to be equal to the price. But for a monopoly, that is not the case. Look at it. That the marginal revenue separates. It's not equal to the price. Look, let me go like this. If I charge $100, I can only sell one unit. But if I lower my price to 95, I can probably sell two. If I lower my price to 90, I can probably sell three. And if I lower my price to 85, now I can probably sell four. Okay, now look at the total revenue this company is going to get. This is the total revenue. At a price of 100, they're going to get $100. At a price of 95, they're going to get $190. 95 times two. At a price of three, they're going to get $270. And at a price of four, they're going to get, uh, what is it, 180? Somebody help me. Uh, that'll be 22, 16, 18, is that right? No. 85 times four, how much is it, guys? 34? Am I right? Yeah, 340. Okay, 340. Okay, so now look at this. So let's put that information on a graph. Let's put that information on a graph. Let's see if we can, if, if we can do it here. Let's put that information on, on a graph. Okay, this is the demand. At a price of 100, I can sell one at a price of 95. I can sell two at a price of 90. I can sell three at a price of 85. I can sell four. Okay, so we're putting the information on the graph. So the first unit is going to bring me $100. So my marginal revenue is $100. In other words, when I sold my first unit, my additional revenue increased by $100. Now, when I sold the second unit, by how much did my revenue increase? Look at this, it went from 100 to 190. So then the second unit, my revenue increased by $90. So then the second unit is only bringing me $90. I'm selling it for 95, but it only bring me $90. How about the third unit? How much did it bring me? 80. 80, right? Somewhere right here, the, 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 see the graph is not to scale. You know, but it brought me somewhere right here, let's say 80. And then the next one brought me, how much? 70. 70. So as you can see, the marginal revenue curve always separate, always separates from the demand curve. Okay, and that's something that you have to know, that every time a monopoly wants to sell more units, they have to lower the price. And if they lower the price, that creates a situation in which the additional revenue they're going to get right here is actually less than the selling price. So on a graph, the marginal revenue always separates from the demand curve. So then a monopoly, a monopoly, if we were to create a graph, the monopoly looks something like this. This is the demand, this is the price, this is the quantity, and the marginal revenue always separates from the demand curve. Okay, so again, monopolies, monopolies control the demand. I'm sorry, the supply. They do not control the demand, right? So then the question is, so where does a monopoly, right? Where does a monopoly stop producing? And guess what? Monopolies, just like any other company, just like any other companies, they always stop producing at the point in which the marginal cost equals the marginal revenue where the marginal cost equals the marginal revenue. So look at this. 
if this company has a marginal cost that looks something like this, then a monopoly is going to stop producing at this point per marginal cost equals the marginal revenue. And they're going to try to charge as much as the consumers are willing to pay. And consumers are willing to pay, let's say, $90 for this product. Guess what? They're going to charge them $90. Right? So again, just like perfect competition. Okay, let me come back. Just like perfect competition, we always produce for marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That's it. Right? The same thing with monopolies. We stop producing for marginal cost equals marginal revenue. The only difference is that for a monopoly, the marginal revenue is always below the demand curve. So then the question is, is this company making money or losing money? And the answer is, well, I do not know because I don't know what the average total cost is. Well, let's assume that this is my average total cost of production, my average total cost. Okay, so then at a price of 90, the company is going to make 100 units. That's where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Then the question is, is this company making money or losing money? Well, at 100 units of output, my average total cost is right here, which simply means that on the average, it costs me $80 to make each unit, and I'm selling it for 90. So the question is, am I making money or losing money? And it's very easy to know that this company is actually making all this money right here. All this part in yellow, let me, let me make it better. Uh, it's actually the profits that the company is making. Again, it's a very simple, it's a very, very simple thing for you to understand, guys. A monopoly is going to stop producing for marginal cost equals marginal revenue, which in this case will be right here. Right, then they produce that level of output, which is 100, and then they will charge as much as the consumers are willing to pay, which consumers are willing to pay this price right here, 90. Right, consumers are willing to pay 90. So then they will charge that price, and as you can see, then the company is making money. Any questions? Yeah, I got a question. So uh, this is very comparable to the perfect competition, except the demand line is that, it, I guess, what are the comparisons between the demand curve on this graph and the yes, price sir. curve on the perfect competition? competition. Yeah, okay. In a perfect competition, we have the aggregate supply and there's the aggregate demand. That's the total companies in the industry and the total producers in the industry. Then they come to an agreement. Equilibrium price is determined by the force of supply and demand. So let's say the price is gonna be $20. For the individual companies, for the individual companies, they have no choice. They can sell the product at this price, as much as they want to produce. So then for them, the demand is as much as they can produce. If they can produce a million dollars at a price of $20, the market will buy that from them because they are very small in compared to the industry. So then the only decision for these companies is to produce or determine the output. So they will stop producing for marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Right? This is for a perfect competition. For a monopoly, the aggregate demand is the total demand made by consumers, but the aggregate supply is only them. It's, the same, it's only one company. So the company controls the supply. So they can either produce more or produce less. So that's why monopolies are not price takers. They're actually price finders or price influencers. They influence the price by manipulating, by manipulating the supply. So they cut the supply, prices are going to go up. See? But the problem with monopolies is that they only control the supply. They don't control the demand. So now think about this. They are presently right here. And let's assume that they decide to cut the supply to try to in influence the price to a higher price. So now price goes to 30. Right, but as you can see now, 
the monopoly realized that when they cut the supply, yeah, they're going to charge higher prices, but sales are going to de decline. So then they say, well, what can I do if I want to sell more than 75 units? And the answer is, what a consumer will tell him, a consumer will tell the company, hey, I'll buy more from you if you lower the price. So then if the company lowered the price to 20, like right here, if the company lowered the price to 20, like right here, then consumers want to buy, let's say, 80 units. But now look up at the look at the amount of money they were making before. I don't have a calculator with 30 times 75. Somebody give me a somebody give me a, a calculation. 30 times 75, how much is it? 2,250. I didn't hear you. 2,250. Okay, 2,250. Okay, so now they lower the price to 20. So it's now 20 times 80 is equals to what? 1,600. 1,600? So then the additional revenue by doing this was how much? For 650, right? The additional revenue is, it was the total additional revenue is 650, but how much is the additional revenue per unit? So it's 650 now divided by 80 and the additional revenue is, no, actually divided by five because now they're selling more, five more units. 650 divided by five is how much? 13. Six fifty divided by five. Six fifty. Oh, I'm sorry. I got that backwards. Fifty. Should be fifty. 60. So then, six fifty divided by five is one thirty. Sorry. Got okay, one thirty. So then, the additional revenue that those units brought them was one hundred and thirty per unit. But, but look what happened. And again, I'm making this too complicated. But look what happened to the revenue they were making before the change, right? Before they were making 10 additional dollars on 75 units. So they're going to lose that because now those 75 units and the other five more are going to be sold for $20. So then the additional revenue is actually going to decrease for them when we look at the per units. So then the easiest way to do it it just go like this. And again, let me use the same example. If I am, well, let, let, me, let, me, let me create the same graph again. This is the demand that Monopoly have. If they want to charge $20, they only want to sell one unit. But if they lower the price to 15, they can probably sell two units and they drop it to 10, they're probably going to sell three units. So now look what happened to the additional revenue when they lower the price. At the beginning, they were making $20, 20 times one. Now they're making what? When they lower the price to 15, now they're making $30. So the additional revenue is went by 10 because they were making 20 before. When they lower the price to 10, now they are making $30. Is that right? How much more? Do they gain? Nothing. So then the first unit brought the first unit, the first unit brought me 20, right? The second unit brought me 10, and the third unit brought me zero. So as you can see, the marginal revenue separate. So now look what happened if they decide to lower the price by five more five more dollars. So now it'll be five times now at 20. Uh, hold on. Uh, if they lower the price to five, they're going to be able to sell uh, uh, four units. You know? So at $5, they'll be able to sell four units. So it'll be five times 20. It will be 20. So by doing that, they're actually going to lose now $10. It, it just, it just uh, let me see if I can tell you this. So all, all we're saying right here, Micah, is that monopolies control the supply, but they don't control the demand. And as a result of this, if they want to sell more units, they're going to have to lower the price. But every time they lower the price, the additional revenue they get becomes smaller. Right? So, but remember this. 
Monopolies, they're not in the business of making people happy. Monopolies are in the business of maximizing profits. So then the question is, what is the strategy that a monopoly will use to maximize profits? And of course, what formula can they use? And the formula that they will use is the same formula that perfect competition companies use. We simply say, you stop producing where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So if your marginal cost and your marginal revenue intersects right here on this graph, let me erase all this. Okay. So in this graph, the company will stop producing for marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So they'll produce two units, and then they will charge as much as the consumers are willing to pay. Right. So, so a monopoly does not care if there's an excess demand. They don't care if people want to buy it. They don't care. They just care about where can I make the most money. Now, look at this. Let's assume that uh, this is my average total cost. Oh, hold on. That's an ugly line. Uh, let me go right here. Let's assume that this is my average total line. Okay, so if I was to ask you, is this monopoly making money or losing money? What will be the answer? Remember, we stop producing for marginal cost equals marginal revenue. We'll be right here. We produce that level of output and we'll charge as much as the consumers are willing to pay. Consumers are willing to pay $15. So I'm gonna sell this product for $15. But at that level of production, of production, how much does it cost me to make each unit? Well, as you can see, it costed me right here. It costed me $10. So then the question is, are we making money or losing money? Making money. We are making money. How much money are we making? $5 a unit. Exactly. So all this line right here, all this distance right here is the actual profit that this company is actually making. Now, what happened about profits? What do we know about profits? They, at least in perfect competition, are a beacon. In perfect competition, almost in any field, Profits always attract competition, right? Profits always attract competition and somebody say, hey, I think I'm gonna go into that line of business because I think I can make money. But in the case of monopolies, monopolies has an advantage. And the advantage that they have is that in the monopolistic market, on a monopolist market, there's a lot of barriers to entry. You know, and monopolies control the information because they're the only company. So people do not know exactly what is the cost of production. People do not know exactly if the company is making money. They do not know. I mean, in other words, they say they got all the information, so it's very difficult to compete with, with them. So then a monopolist have another advantage over monopolistic competition. Because what we know about monopolistic competition is a monopolistic competition on the long run, they're always going to end up operating like this. What is that? What is the perfect competition operating? What are they doing? Are they making money, losing money? What are they doing? Normal profit. Ah, monopolistic competition on the long run, they will only be able to make a normal profit. If they are making profits, those profits are going to disappear. Right? They will only break even, that's it. But monopolies, it's totally different. Monopolies can make profits on the short run as well as the long run because people cannot come and compete against them. However, this is something that you need to understand. Just because you are a monopoly, that does not mean that you're going to make money. That does not mean that you're always going to be profitable. Because even monopolies go out of business, right? Because individuals simply don't like the price or they don't like that this company is taking advantage of them and individuals look for a substitute. They look for a substitute. Think about, for example, what has been happening in the oil industry in the last 40, 50 years. The oil producing countries decide to unite together create an organization called OPEC, right? 
before OPEC, there were million, not million, but there were hundreds or probably tens or dozens of nations that were producing oil and everybody was competing, you know, to try to make money. They were producing as much as possible. So the price of oil was really low. Then this company, these countries realized that they were making a mistake and all of them decide to unite and control the supply of oil. So they control the supply of oil and boom, the price of oil went up to $100 a barrel in the 1970s when these nations were able to organize themselves. And everybody thought that these companies, these nations were going to literally take advantage of consumers indefinitely. But it did not happen because consumers were able to find an alternative uh, product for them. In other words, consumers begin to move into the consumption of electric cars. Consumers begin to move into the consumption of more efficient cars. Consumers in some nations stop buying cars. I mean, you can go to countries like in Europe, and it's not uncommon to have families that they don't have a car, that they have never had a car, because they live in the big cities. They live in Paris, or they live in London, or they live in Rome, and they don't need a car because they use public transportation. Does it make sense? In words, producers control the supply. They do not control the demand. And if you take advantage of them, they are not going to buy from you. So the price of oil went really high. And what happened in this case? Well, the demand for oil went down. And boom, the price went down. Because the demand shifted dramatically to the left. Okay, any questions? Okay, so let's, let's see these PowerPoint presentations, okay? okay. I just, hold on for a second, I don't think, uh, hold on for a second. Share screen, desktop, chair, and let me share the PowerPoint. Uh, and I think the about hold on for a second. Okay, yeah, right here. What are you looking in your screen, guys? Are you looking at the PowerPoint slides? Yes. Okay. So, in my. Okay. Right here and right here. Okay. So, let's talk about monopoly. A monopoly is an industry in which there is only one producer. No. To be only one producer, that means you are a pure monopoly. Okay. Monopolies have no competition and they have significant power because they control the supply so as a, as a result of this then monopolies they are not price takers monopolies are price makers monopolies have another advantage is because if they are the only ones selling a product then they don't have to modify this product they don't have to make improvements they don't even have to make the, cons the consumer happy Right, because you have no choice. You need my product, I'm the only provider. So I'm going to try to sell you, you know, the cheapest product at the highest price possible, okay? So on this chapter, we're going to try to understand how monopolies behave, right? We're going to try to understand, understand for example, what is the price that a monopoly will charge? And what is the answer? You already know. What is the price that a monopoly will charge? The point at which their marginal costs equal their marginal revenues. No, sir. That's what will they stop. But they'll go all the way to the demand. So they charge a price as high mm. as consumers are willing to pay. Because they take advantage. What is the highest you're willing to pay? Right? And they charge you that price. How much do they produce? They produce for marginal cost equals marginal revenue, which simply means that they produce less than what consumers want. 
So then monopolies is an imperfect market. So the question is, are consumers better off or worse off when we only have one seller? If there was only one gasoline station in town, you think the gasoline station is going to take care of us and sell the gasoline at a lower price? And the answer is not. So then monopolies tend to take advantage of consumers. But monopolies have a problem. And the problem that they have is that in order to sell more units, they have to lower the price. Look, if they charge a price of 13, they can only sell one unit. If they lower the price to 12, now they can sell two units. Well, look what happened to the revenue before they were making 13. So now it'll be 12 times two is 24. So then the second unit only brought me $11. Right, and if I go to 11, the same story. So all you need to know is that marginal revenue tend to separate from the demand curve. It tend to separate. Any monopoly will maximize profits by using the same rule that we have discussed. We stop producing for marginal cost equals marginal revenue, right here. We'll produce four units and we will charge as much as the consumers want to sell. So in this graph right here, is this company making money or losing money? Is this company making money or losing money? Making money. Alex, what are you saying? Making money. Why are they making money, Alex? Because their average total cost is under their uh, margin, the price that they're charging. Exactly. In other words, it costs them only $8 to make it, and they're selling for 10 so they're making $2 per unit. So the total profit they're making is $8. How about if this was in thousand? So they're making 8000 Right? For how long will this company going to be able to sustain this? And the answer is, as long as the demand is favorable, they can continue this forever. They don't have to worry about competition. They only have to worry about how consumers are going to what? Respond. If consumers don't like the price, they're going to buy less. And if they buy less, profits begin to decline. Right? So then monopolies have a market power and they have the ability to alter the market price of a good or service. They don't have total market power, right? They don't have a total market power. So this, this slide is wrong. A monopoly firm has total market power. The answer is no, baloney. They have power over the supply, but they don't have no power over the demand. So this complicates the profit maximizing procedure. Right? We know that it's an imperfect market. So then the company will stop producing for marginal cost equals marginal revenue, right? Now look at this case. Based on the rule of profit maximization, how many units is this company going to make? Is it zero, QM, QC? What are they gonna make? Where marginal cost equals marginal revenue right here. QM. And they're going to produce QM. What price are they going to charge? A. As much as consumers are willing to pay, which should be $1,100. Is this company making money or losing money? Well, the average total cost is only somewhere right here. So yeah, they're making a lot of money because the price is higher than the average total cost of production. So this rectangle indicates the size of the profits. So as you can see, a monopoly always produces less than what consumers want. Look, let me see if I can explain this this way. This is kind of interesting, okay? Okay, this is, this, the demand, this is the marginal revenue, and this is the marginal cost. The company produced for marginal cost equals marginal revenue. 
and they're going to charge a price, let's say, of $20, and they're going to make 100 units. Okay, so now this company has an average total cost that looks something like this. Okay, so then the question is, is this company making money at 100 units of production? The answer is they are making money because they're selling it for $20 and it only costs them $19 to make it. Look at this. At 101 units, this is how much it costs them to make it. And this is how much they can sell it for. Are you following me? So why is the company not making 101 units? No, no. Now let me let me move the average total cost curve by itself. Something like this. It was the company is producing right here, someplace right there. Remember, from here to here, we're experiencing economies of scales. The cost of production is decreasing. This is the constant return, and from here, it actually begins to increase. So as you can see, a monopoly a monopoly is always producing somewhere right here. In other words, they are not producing at the most efficient point. Now. Perfect competition, on the other hand, they always produce at the lowest cost of production. Because perfect competition, the companies try to be efficient because that's the only way they can make money. But monopolies, they don't care. They don't want to be efficient. They don't, they don't have to go all the way over here. They can stop anywhere right here. And they can probably produce the next unit and still make a little bit, a little bit of money. They can produce a little bit of money, a little bit of money right here. But at this level of production, that's when they make the most money. So they always go for the most money. See, monopolies, they don't care that there's people right here that they need the product. They don't care if people are dying because they don't have the product. They only care about where can I make the most money possible. Think about pharmaceutical companies. Think about pharmaceutical companies. Uh, for example, the treatment for the cocktail of pills that you have to take. Uh, for people dealing with AIDS. Okay, this is what we know. It's a public information. The cost is $18,000 $18, per month. For individuals, hold on a second. Okay. Let me stop sharing right here. Let me see if I can do it again. Okay. This is the information that we know, guys. The treatment for the pills for those people suffering from AIDS, the cause is $18,000 a month, the treatment. Most insurance pay for this treatment. There are a lot of people in Africa, in the continent of Africa, they're actually dying because they don't have the money to be able to pay for this medicine. Thousands of individuals. The cost of this drug is about a dollar and 67. The whole cocktail, all the pills to combine, cost the company about five dollars to make it. So if it cost them five dollars to make it, why did they charge eighteen thousand dollars? And the reason is because they have a product that either you buy it or you die. You have no choice. Does the company care that other people are dying? And the answer is no. So then the amount or the output they're going to produce is never the amount that the market want to consume. And that's why countries in Africa today have actually go out and stole the formula. They, have, they don't even have to steal it. They just took a pills, they break it down, they look at the chemical components of the pills, and by trial and error, they were able to what? To make the same pill. Well, these are patents, they are protected. But the country of Africa say, I know they are patents and they are protected, but I'm not going to honor them because I have thousands of people dying. I don't care if you take my nation into courts. Does it make sense? So that's the problem with monopolies. The monopolies is an imperfect market. 
and they don't care about them, nobody else. They only care about themselves. And they care about how can I maximize my profits? And they always maximize profits by producing at the point where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Okay, so then right here, the company is making money. Now, what is unique about monopolies? Okay. Well, what is unique about monopolies is that there's a lot of barriers to entry. They sell a product that has no substitutes. So then they don't have no pressure from competition. They have no pressure from competition. So a monopolist needs only to increase quantity. They, they don't need to increase the quantity, even if consumers demanding that, right? So the difference between one and the other, look at that, competitive market, perfect competitive. High profits attract new players. Monopoly, high profits attract pair players, but there are so many barriers that it will exclude new suppliers, okay? So then the production chains, for perfect, perfect, blah, 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 blah. for perfect competition, economic profits tend to go to zero. For monopolies, prices can stay at the same price and the profits can stay at the same level as long as the demand is favorable. For perfect competition, price equals to marginal cost. For monopoly, price is always higher than marginal cost. They're always going to charge you a price as high as you are willing to, as you are willing to pay. Okay, so that's a monopoly tends to make more profits than any other industry, and the way they make more profits is by reducing the quantity and pushing up prices. So then, on a monopolist monopolist market, consumers receive fewer products and pay more for them. Right. Now, in some cases, a monopoly is the industry. So if the monopoly is the industry, then they absolutely have total power over the market. Now, what are some of the barriers? What, what are some of the barriers that monopolies use? Well, in some cases, just the size. They are so big that nobody can compete against them. In some cases, they do it through you legally. The government has given them the license to operate something. They have patents, they have copyrights, and you cannot compete against them. Or they have a resource. They own a resource that cannot be duplicated. Again, they can be patents. They have exclusive franchises, political appointments. The government allow them to operate. They control key inputs. I mean, they can sue you today that you try to compete against them. Think about, for example, Apple, Apple in their in their in their what in their Apple phones. Don't they sue? What was the name of the Japanese company that they sue for copyright infringements? Anybody know what was the the? Is it Samsung? I believe. And what were they suing? They were suing that the look of the Samsung phone was almost identical to the look of the Apple phone. And they won the case. Because they say that the other company was trying to make a product to look just like the product of Apple. So in other words, the company can make your life miserable simply by suing you. In some cases, the company will just simply buy you out and get you out of business. In some cases, the company is so big that they can actually experience economies of scales. Okay, any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break and then we'll continue. It is at 2.25, let's be back at 2.35. Is that clear? Okay, let's take a 10 minute break, we'll be back at 2.35.
what we have learned up to now is that monopolies is an imperfect market that they use the same strategy that other companies use to try to maximize profits and is that they will stop producing for marginal cost equals marginal revenue the only difference is that a monopoly will always try to find a way in which they will charge the highest price that consumers are willing to pay okay that's what we have discussed up to now so let's come back to the powerpoint slides we don't have a lot of them left so uh it's right here okay so uh monopolies <clears throat> control a lot of barriers to entry they can be patents franchises political appointments and economic skills okay so what we need to understand is that they they don't have absolute power right but they have power and the reason why they don't have absolute power is because consumers control the demand they still control the demand okay so the only way a monopoly will be able to actually make more money than what they already make when they use the strategy is if they engage in price discrimination in other words they make a little bit of units sell them as high as possible to some individuals and then they make other units that they sell to other people at a lower price that's just something that you need to understand that it is possible to even make a little bit more money by selling additional items at a price lower than what you're already selling. Okay, so that's monopolies. If they engage in price discrimination. Now, what is some of the pros and cons of market power? Many people say that some of the problem with monopolies, you know, is that, well, not only do they have uh, cons, but they have, actually have some pros. This is the argument why monopolies are good for the economy. Many people say they are not as bad as you think. And this is what they say, look, if a monopoly is very profitable, a monopoly is always going to be more in more research and development because now they have money and they're going to try to improve the product to be able to continue making more money. Again, this is one argument. that monopolies are always trying to do more research and development in order to improve the product. That they're always trying to new inventions and new innovations. Right? And the large companies can produce more efficiently. So this is the argument that we have I get four monopolies. But people say it's totally the opposite. If you are a monopoly and you are the only seller, why would you spend money on research and development? Why would you spend money in innovation? Right? And why would you have to worry about being efficient? So you don't care. You don't care. Because you have no competition, there's little incentive to improve the product. But in the reality is that inventions and innovations don't come from big companies. Inventions and innovation in reality come from little companies. As a matter of fact, I don't know if the book mentioned this information, but 80% of all new products, innovative products, come from companies that have less than 20 employees. Less than 20 employees. Okay, so again, this is the issue of, you know, of our competition. Now, like I say, in some cases, an industry exists as a result of government protection, and that's a natural monopoly. The question is, why will a government allow one company to be the only supplier? And the answer or the argument is that simply is because companies believe, hold on for a second, I don't know if I'm recording. Yeah, uh, companies, government believes that by having only one company you know, to supply the product, this company will be able to achieve economies of scales. Okay, so that's the argument. So then the government sets up natural monopolies like Cleveland utilities, utility companies, and things like that, transportation companies. Okay? And the government controls natural monopolies by allowing them to make a specific profits or they force them to do a specific output. By the way, guys, we're going to learn about natural monopolies in the next chapter, okay? But that will be after the exam. And this is the end of the chapter, guys. This is the end of the chapter. So, uh, my question is, do you have any questions?